Welcome to the Ancient Alternative View. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Good day to all watching the Ancient Alternative View, the place where everyone's opinion matters. Remember, the truth has been hidden and covered for many years, so all theories to our ancient past are on the table. I look forward to hearing your views. Please like, comment and subscribe below. Thank you. Palmyra, an archaeological site located in modern-day Syria. Thought to have been established sometime during the 3rd millennium BC as a settlement of Tadmor, and it became a leading city of the Near East and major trading post on the Silk Road. The architecture of Palmyra shows combinations of Greco-Roman styles with those of Persia and Arabia, and the ruins that remain have significant cultural and historical significance. Recently, however, its treasures have been at risk due to the ongoing civil war in Syria. For a time, the so-called Islamic State controlled the region around Palmyra, and some of the ruins at the site were destroyed. The Syrian government retook the area in March 2016, and the ancient site, which has survived multiple wars, remains a key historical and cultural treasure. Palmyra was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1980. Located more than 100 miles northeast of Damascus, the present-day capital of Syria, Palmyra began during, or so-called, the Stone Age as a small settlement near an oasis in the desert. The name Palmyra is believed to be the Latinized form of the original Arabic name Tadmor, which is related to the word for date palm. Started as a Mesopotamian settlement, Palmyra was controlled by the Armenians from the 2nd millennium BC, before Arabs arrived in the 1st millennium BC. Interestingly, the Arabs assimilated the city's existing population and are said to have spoken the local dialect of Palmyrene. There was also a significant Jewish population in Palmyra. In 64 BC, the Roman Empire conquered Syria, and thus Palmyra. However, the city was left largely autonomous and became a significant trading partner with Rome. However, in the 14th century AD, Palmyra was conquered by the Emperor Tiberius, and thus was fully under Roman rule. This lasted for roughly two and a half centuries, with the onset of the Persian Wars. The Persians established their control over Palmyra in the 2nd century AD. During the struggle for control, the first city of Palmyra was destroyed by Roman Emperor Aurelian, in 273 AD, although it was eventually rebuilt, for the next 400 years Palmyra fell under the sway of the Romans again during the Byzantine Empire, the latter which established it as a Christian city. From the early 600s onwards, though the city was ruled by various Arab caliphates, the great city remained a significant trading post on the Silk Road linking present-day Asia and Europe until it was destroyed by the Timurid warlords in the 1400s. The Timurids were the tribe of Turco-Mongol origin that controlled much of what today is known as Iran, Iraq and Syria, amongst other areas. Palmyra was again rebuilt, but not with its former grandeur. It became a smaller village and was occupied until 1932, when Syria fell under French control. They moved residents to nearby Tadmor so the archaeological work could be performed on the local site. The early settlement of Palmyra began around the Efka Spring on the northern side of the Al Kabur Wadi, and that's where many of the site's significant ruins still remain. These include the Temple of Bel, built for worship of the Mesopotamian god Bel, and the Great Colonnade, or main thoroughfare of the city. The site also features remains of other temples, residences and Roman-style theatres. There is also evidence of the ancient city's Damascus Gate, an entrance to the walled community directed to the Syrian capital, as well as what is believed to have been a Senate meeting house and courts buildings. Palmyra, like many of our ancient sites, in its grandeur would have looked absolutely stunning and two words seemed to have stuck out to me during my research, and that was the Silk Road that it was entwined into. The Silk Road was a network of trade routes connecting China and the Far East with the Middle East and Europe. 
established when the Han Dynasty in China officially opened trade with the West in 130 BC. The Silk Road routes remained in use until 1453 AD when the Ottoman Empire boycotted trade with China and closed them. Although it's been nearly 600 years since the Silk Road has been used for international trade, the routes had a lasting impact on commerce and culture up until present day. The Silk Road may have formally opened up trade between the Far East and Europe during the Han Dynasty, which ruled China from 206 BC to 220 AD, but the transport of goods and services along these routes dates back a lot, lot further. The Royal Road, which connected Susa in present-day Iran, more than 1,600 miles west to the Sardi near the Mediterranean Sea in Turkey, was established by the Persian ruled Darius I during the Archimenid Empire, some 300 years before the opening of the Silk Road. The Persians also expanded the Royal Road to include smaller routes that connected Mesopotamia to the Indian subcontinent as well as North Africa via Egypt. Alexander the Great, ruler of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedonia, expanded his dominion into Persia via the Royal Road. Parts of the thoroughfare were ultimately incorporated into the Silk Road. The east-west trade routes between Greece and China began to open during the 1st and 2nd centuries BC. The Roman Empire and the Kushkan Empire, which ruled territory in what is now northern India, also benefited from the commerce created by the routes on the Silk Road. Interestingly, the ancient Greek word for China is Ceres, which literally means the land of silk. However, despite the obvious link to the name, the term Silk Road wasn't coined until 1877, when German geographer and historian Fernand von Rittenstein first used it to describe the trade routes. Historians now prefer the term Silk Routes, which more accurately reflects the fact that there was more than one thoroughfare through more than one period of time. The Silk Road routes included a large network of strategically located trading posts, markets and thoroughfares designed to streamline the transport, exchange, distribution and storage of goods, some of which we've looked at in prior episodes. Routes extended from the Greco-Roman metropolis of Antioch across the Syrian desert via Palmyra to the Parthian capital and Seleucia on the Tigris River, a Mesopotamian city in modern-day Iraq. From the Seleucia, routes passed eastwards over the Zargus Mountains to the cities of Ekbatana, Iran and Merv, Turkish Amatan, from which additional routes traversed to the modern-day Afghanistan and eastwards into Mongolia and China. Silk Road routes also led to ports of the Persian Gulf, where goods were transported up the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Routes from these cities also connected to ports along the Mediterranean Sea, from which goods were shipped to cities throughout the Roman Empire in Europe. Hello everyone. Uh, it's been good speaking to you today about the old Silk Road. We've had a look at some of the sites alongside it. I think it becomes very interesting when we come into Turkey and we've looked at the site today in Palmyra ever so close to Turkey as well the sites there very interesting like Cappadocia which is an underground settlement which would have been very easily accessible to Palmyra just in case we've also got the buried site of Gebekli Tepe in Turkey now this has been carbon dated through when it was buried to a minimum of 12,500 years ago. Remember that the actual stone itself hasn't been carbon dated. Randy Carlson says a unique way that stone actually can be dated. Welcome to go and have a look at his interview with Joe Rogan and he explains quite clearly how that can be done. It'll be very interesting to see how long this has been here because if it is thousands of years prior. Maybe it was buried so that civilizations in the future may be able to predict future coming cataclysms and get to places like Cappadocia. Now, wouldn't it be interesting if 
these old silk roads. Yes, okay. I know that in recent times they've been used, as explained through the video, by different cultures. What if these were migration patterns also from a bit earlier in our civilization and were more inherited by some of the civilizations later on? I wonder whether our ancient past was mapping its way to areas to keep itself safe from cataclysms. And I'm wondering whether this old silk road holds more pieces to the jigsaw puzzle. Thank you very much indeed. I'd love to hear your ancient alternative view on the ancient hallmarks you may have found today at Palmyra and what you think of the old silk road and whether it holds any keys to our ancient past that we are missing. I look forward to hearing your views. All the very best. Remember, there's always an ancient alternative view. Thank you for watching.